my name is Mallory Trauber and I'm a program director at Living Classroom. Today we'll be exploring the parts of the flower. Let's get started. We love flowers because of their beautiful fragrance and their bright colors. In the natural world, flower scents and colors help attract animals for a very specific purpose, to feast of nectar and pollen. Can you think of pollinators that visit flowers? We often think of bees, butterflies, and hummingbirds, but animals and insects like bats, moths, beetles, flies, and wasps are also pollinators. Wind and water can also move pollen. A pollinator moves pollen grains from the anther of the flower to the stigma of the flower. This starts the process of producing fruit and seeds for new flowers to grow. Let's take a look at the parts of a flower. We will be looking at a species of lily today if you would like to follow along and dissect a flower to learn more about how it works. First, let's try to identify the sepals. The sepals can be found at the top of the stem of the flower. Sometimes the sepals appear green when they are covering the bud of the flower, but as the flower starts to bloom, they may look more like petals. Now let's try to find the petals. Petals are often brightly colored to attract pollinators. The petals of this lily contain beautiful spots. Moving inside of the flower, we may find a sticky fluid that contains sugar, which is the nectar. Pollinating insects are attracted to the nectar. Here we can find a filament, which is the tube that holds up the anther. The anther is the part of the flower that produces pollen. If we take a close look at the anther, perhaps using a magnifying glass, we may discover pollen is visible as the flower matures. In the middle of this flower, we will find the stigma, held up by a tube called the style. The stigma's job is to trap the pollen. It is where the pollen must land. Then the pollen will travel down the style. At the bottom of the style, we will find the flower's ovary, which contains many ovules, which are also easier to see with a magnifying glass or a microscope. Can you think of what the purpose of a flower might be? The purpose of flowers is pollination. The pollen travels to the flower's ovules, so new seeds may be produced and bring about the next generation of flowers. Also, we enjoy their scents and beautiful colors as they germinate. This parts of a flower activity comes from our second grade lesson, Flower Power, but we think everyone might enjoy learning about how flowers bloom.